I think we're gonna start this video out by picking a random mean comment on YouTube and reading it. And the winner is Brad Mason 4556. Yeah, yeah, I'd challenge you any day to a match of actual fishing. No electronics, just bathometry maps and weather reports. Any day, dude. <laughs> I love the internet. Any day, man, let's go, let's go fishing. You might beat my butt. I can't catch a fish without live scope. I mean, uh, the first wall I ever caught was probably the day that I put live scope on my boat and I'm just grateful the electronics have allowed me to finally touch and catch those sweet, sweet walleyes. But if I was gonna catch fish without live scope, and literally my favorite technique, one of my favorite techniques where you literally catch more fish without using it, snap jigging plastic, something I've been doing a ton of this summer again, finally. And to be honest, once I got live scope on my boat, and like a lot of people, I shied away from the weeds. We're all about those weed edges and outside where you can easily see fish, but there's so many walleyes live up in the weeds all year long, and you can't just scan and look and see that there's a fish in a eight foot clump of cabbage that comes up to the surface. You have to fish those fish to find them. So like a lot of people, stop doing as much of that. But this summer, my buddy Nick and I were fishing a little local walleye league, casting slip bobbers and night crawlers, casting jigs and crawlers, drop shots, not getting bit. Busted out a little quarter ounce VMC Neon Moon Eye with the smallest champ minnow on the back, a kind of a straight tail or fluke style. And we all of a sudden caught 18 walleyes in less than 40 minutes. We ended up getting a bridesmaid that night, second place, just because that's what we do. <laughs> and we're always one fish short. But had we picked up the plastics and snapped up in those weeds earlier, I'm sure we could have got one more, you know, a decent under and, uh, but yeah, that really had my eyes open up of like, man, this is all I ever used to do, snap in plastics. I never used to cast at fish, uh, I would, or individual fish or, or troll or whatever. I'm dissecting weed lines, weed points, humps, clumps of weeds on flats. Put your trolling motor on 0.7 to 0.8, whatever, and you're just fan casting. And you're only gonna get, you know, four, five, six snaps in, and then next fan cast, and you're casting every 70 feet or something when I'm trying to cover a really long, expansive flat. If I'm pulling up to little the point on on the, the spot on the spot little tip of a point or whatever that has tapering weeds and then i'm gonna fan cast and cover about every five to ten feet of that piece of structure just boom 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 break it down in lines and whenever you get bit cast right back to the same spot because there's going to be something special about it whether it's a little rock a little sand patch a little hole in the weeds whatever it is a nice little clump that has a canopy there's something about it so many times when i'm snapping i'll go 40 minutes without seeing a fish catch a fish and then go back to back to back all in the same little section and it's just a magical bite. There's nothing better in my mind than when you're snapping and you just go like this and all of a sudden there's one on there. It can be awkward sometimes. Sometimes you're snapping and you have to do the double pump like, oh, there's one, just like fishing a jig and ramp. But man, when you are snapping that bait and you go to do it the next time and every, every snap is like a hook set and it just stops that next time, there's no better feeling in walleye fishing for me than that. One of my absolute favorite snap jigging setups is actually really finessey. So there's kind of two different things you can do these finessier snap jigging setups or the people will almost call it like rip jigging instead of snapping, ripping. And that's big, heavier half ounce to three quarter, even one ounce heads with paddle tails and big baits. But if I could choose one, it would be all around a quarter ounce VMC neon moon eye jig with an impulse smelt minnow, a champ minnow, a fluke, something that's thin, has that straight tail. The reason for that, and also a quarter ounce is the lightest jig head you can ever use snap jigging. But the reason for that is I'm fishing this thing like a jigging wrap, but I'm throwing it places a fish has never seen a jigging wrap. You're getting that fast, darty action flying past their face, but you're throwing it up in four foot, seven foot, nine, 10 on the deeper end, 
and they're having this bait scream past their face and they just, they pounce on it. We all know how good jig wrap fish are, or how good they are at catching fish, and we also know that fish on a deep hump on a popular lake, popular lake community spot have seen a million jig and wraps, you know? And some days they don't want to eat it, some days it's the deal. Those weed fish hit that thing like they've never seen one before because they probably haven't, unless it was the real thing swimming past. But I love those fluke straight tail minnows because they fish way faster, way dartier, and I can use a little bit lighter head. And when I'm doing that, I'm using a little bit lighter rod too. This isn't something I'm throwing in super, super thick weeds. This is more the sparse stuff or patches or clumps, not the stuff that comes all the way up to the surface and is matted and whatever, but in the sparse stuff where you can get away with that lighter setup. I'm running a seven foot three medium light. This one's an Elliott. A soft, mushy rod by snap jigging and rip jigging standards. But I'm not trying to necessarily rip this bait out of the weeds all the time. You're gonna get strands for sure and you'll do just fine with a seven foot three medium light or whatever fast action. Um, while I'm still talking about it, something that I haven't really seen talked about a lot, the uh, hidden hood handles on the Elliott's, now they've got those new performance handles that are way thinner. I think that's just a personal preference, but one time where I like that hidden hood, that bigger, beefier one, is for these snap jigging type setups. And anything where I'm power fishing, and whether it's ripping a jigging wrap, ripping a plastic, uh, Stuff like that where I'm really, you know, doing a lot. <laughs> I love that little bulkier, beefier handle. I just feel like I have more power. I like that thinner performance handle when I'm doing really light, finesse stuff and really just trying to feel what's going on. But with this light, finesse snap jigging setup, I'm using a 10 pound braided mainline and I'll do a three to six, seven foot liter fluorocarbon of 10 pound Suffix Advanced Fluoro. And it's not a super beefy setup because like I said, this is finesse -y. I'm still snapping it, moving it fast, but it's a small bait. I think it's just over three inches and just a little darty. Does a really good job of catching a lot of fish. Now on the other end of this, there's times where I'm doing something similar, but a lot different. And I'm beefing everything up. I'm going to like this seven foot one medium extra fast way more backbone, what I like to call the whooping stick, right? The pool cue. Just loads faster, heavier, beefier, and everything about this is heavier, stronger. Then I'm using, you can't use a quarter ounce jig head with a, a paddle tail. It just doesn't fall fast enough to get that reaction bite. That paddle tail is gonna fall about this fast. Great early spring and cold water, maybe late, late fall, good. I want that slow, subtle fall, but all spring, summer, and even into the fall until that water temp gets below like into the 40s. I want that bait falling fast. So three ace is the lightest I use. That's with smaller three inch swim baits. Otherwise I'm using a half ounce or even three quarter ounce with these bigger, thicker bodied four inch swim baits, just so you still get that reaction by fall rate for them to pounce on. When I'm using these bigger, beefier swim baits, that's when I like to change my head style and hook style too. So this is a VMC boxer jig. And the reason I beef that up, like I said, I beef the rod up, I beef the line up. This has got a way stouter, heavy duty hook. Most people would consider this a jig for bass but I don't want a thin wire hook. I want something that's crazy beefy so that when I'm literally doing a hook set and I ream into a 24 inch walleye, I don't have a hook bending out. I'm not worried about having a thinner wire hook to get that hook to poke through when I'm doing little short snaps because this, I'm literally doing a hook set every single time. So that is my swim bait head of choice. I love the profiles and colors that kind of pointed head, it comes through weeds nice, and it just is a perfect match for these bigger swim baits, like three inch and four inch. Uh, Storm Largo Shads is one of my favorite. The three and a half inch size is kind of the most universal. And with this beefier setup, I'm using minimum, you can get by with 10 pound braid, I'd rather have some 15 on there, and a heavier fluorocarbon leader. 12 is super light, I'd say even 14 is about ideal. 
And this is the thing that I'm sending into those cabbage stalks where I'm ripping it out of the weeds. Something that's taken the NWT by storm the last couple years. People ripping those baits. John Hoyer is one who's perfected it, right? He's using at lightest half ounce jig heads, usually three quarter, up to an ounce, four inch swim baits. And you are snapping that bait and you're gonna get in the weeds, but you're snapping it so hard, it's ripping out of there. And when that bait rips out of the weeds and starts to crash back down, you're getting a reaction bite. So it's kind of two different styles, the big, beefy, powerful, aggressive, right ripping out of thick weeds. Or my personal preference, the little finesse, but snap jigging. And I'm still snapping that thing fast and fishing it fast. It's just so much less plastic that you don't need as heavy of a setup to get the same speed and fall rate of that bait. One of my absolute favorite ways to catch a walleye, and I'm telling you, you will catch more without using live scope. For this video, I tried to get a few fish on live scope while snap jigging, and I think I had caught five or six, boom, boom, boom. And then as soon as I started trying to record, and seeing you know where maybe there's a fish there up shallow or whatever i got a couple more on camera but my catch rate went way down and as soon as i shut that off and i forget about it and i'm just fan casting the area and ripping that's when i catch more i'm telling you if you're snap jigging in shallow weeds usually for me it's that six to nine foot stuff but whether it's four to 10, you are going to catch more fish without having forward facing sonar. You're not gonna change how you're fishing. You're getting the cadence right, you're snapping. As soon as I see a fish on that graph, then I start to slow down and I'm like, oh, he's following it down, you know, and I'm trying to slow its fall and hold that line tight when it's dropping. And as soon as I ignore it, even if I knew there was one there and I'm just fishing it how I've fished it since I was about 14 years old, my catch rate drastically goes up. Specifically when looking for really good areas for snap jigging, I want to have deep water close, especially as we get into this fall transition and even push into fall. Fish stay shallow all year long. I know everybody moves out to that deep water and they're looking to rig creek chubs or jigging wraps out in 26 to 30 feet of water. I promise you there are just as many fish still up shallow, but when that deep water is close and they can move up and down, I'm looking for those sharp contours off of flats, points, big pieces of structure that break off into deep water and I'm usually keeping the boat out off of that edge. It depends on how steep of a break it is, but in say 18 to 20 feet of water, and I'm throwing my bait up into that six, seven foot stuff and working it back. And it's important, it's hard to, but it's important to work it all the way back to the boat. Because there's so many times that when you get out to that edge and the angle of that line changes, where instead of coming straight in, the boat's going 0.7 forward, and you're working and that bait is slowly falling back, where it changes angle and now that bait starts coming this way down off the break where I'll get bit. I learned that trick from Al Linder when he went like six or seven fish up on me and I noticed he was catching them on that swing. But look for deep water, close, and this time of year especially, green weeds are key. If you have green, good, healthy weeds, it's gonna have that bait, it's gonna have fish. As we push farther into the fall and these weeds start to die off, What's gonna happen is the bait fish are gonna leave those weeds when they're dying, decaying, not giving off oxygen and just look like poop. But you can still catch fish snap jigging shallow. Then I transition into a sand bite. And for me, when that's about 55 degrees is when that bite is on fire. Fishing the shallow sand on the inside of where those weeds were or adjacent to where the good weeds were, you get fish up there cruising and shiners and bait fish push back up shallow, just like you catch them all spring long, do the exact same thing late fall while everybody else is out deep wondering why they're not getting bit.